So today I wanted to talk about the perfect One Piece game. Now what I mean by this is the perfect game. Now first of all we're going to make a couple of assumptions here. We're going to assume Bandai is putting legitimate money into this. Alright, it's not like somebody's just throwing together because of a contract. No. They want this to do good. This is like Xenoverse 2. This is, they're putting more money into this than they put into Xenoverse and Xenoverse 2 combined. We can do relatively anything with this game. So this is just coming up with an idea, alright? It's also available on all next-gen consoles only. So now that those rules are out of the way, let's talk about it. First thing that would be awesome would be open world fighting. What is open world fighting? So what I was thinking was, it has like a burning blood style fighting, but it's open world. So you like, you travel, but then when you meet up with enemies, it switches to the burning blood style. It goes into a cutscene, you load, and then you're fighting each other burning blood style. That would be awesome. Now, so it's like, the plot would be simple. The plot is simply that you start the game, it's online, and you start out, and you're in the current One Piece world. Wherever the manga is at, when the game is being made, that is where it will take place. And then they can update the online, so it will update with what the Straw Hat and the, go or and the other crews are doing. So, like, right now, what they would have done was, though it would end, like, you would get this notification, like, you get, like, a new paper. You find, like, a new paper, and it would talk about how Luffy had recently defeated Don Quixote Del Flamingo in the New World. And you'd be in, like, the East Blue reading it, and you'd be like, I'm gonna get you, Straw Hat. Like, imagine this for a minute. You and your friend start your own pirate crew. Or in your Marines, like, you get to make your own character. You join a pirate, you join a pirate crew. You make a pirate crew. Or maybe you're a bounty hunter. Maybe you're a marine. Maybe you're a revolutionary. And in some cases, there'll be more secrecy. Like, if you're a revolutionary, you wouldn't really know much of what was going on with Dragon. you do more of a dirty work for Dragon. But it could still be very interesting. Now, another idea that I have is that after that, you set out and you explore the One Piece world. And you're a Marine, your goal is just to capture pirates and keep the peace. Or maybe you're a Marine and like to kill every single pirate. And you can go do that. And you climb through the rank. You're a revolutionary, you get sent on different missions by dragons. And if you're a pirate, this is where things get fun. You have two options for your goal. To take down the current Yonko and become one. Or become the king of the pirates. Now, I want you guys to understand something. The way this game would work would be that when the game starts, there would be these five, there would be four bosses in the new world. All players start in the east blue. Or north blue or west blue. All players start evenly. And it takes time. You, the tra you actually need to sail. Like, a day sail could take like ten minutes. And you need to Sail to island to island to get to the new world. The game to the new world takes the player like two months. But the point is, in that, a foreign Yoko be in the new world, and then a player, the player beats the Yoko, they become the new Yoko. So if I went to see Big Mom, in the game's continuity, Big Mom would no longer be Yoko. If you wanted to be a Yoko, you would have to take down Kaido, Shank, Blackbeard, or me. And that would be really cool, because eventually the Yoko would just be four players. And you had to take them down. And, and of course the four players would rule the uh, new world, and they balance each other out. And they stop each other from uh, getting to the One Piece. Same way it works now. Like, if you try to go to the One Piece, me and my crew would, would annihilate you. And we'd all have our own stuff going on. Like, if you wanted to make deals with other players, and like, you could make deals with Marines, like some, like some Kaido and Del Flamingo crap. You could take over country. You could even make deals with Warlords, work with Warlords. 
You can do so much. You can take over islands. You can control territory. You can go around and kill people. But at the end of the day, it would balance out the power. And then you could have two goals. You could either become a Yoko and be like, Ah, oh, good enough for me. Like, being a Yoko and being pirate king isn't part of being the game. When you're a pirate in this game, there isn't really a goal. You can, like, choose. Be a Yoko or be a pirate king. But either one, you're just free to do whatever you want. It's like GTA. Kind of like a Grand Theft Auto kind of game. You can just do anything. So you be pirate and you can try to become pirate king, but it would be very hard. It can't be easy to be pirate king. If this would be a game that would be like us One Piece fans inserting ourselves into the manga, and it wouldn't feel real unless it's actually like a big deal making as a pirate. Like, unless none of us can even do it. And you can form a lion dig with other pirate crews. Like, I could form an alliance with a hard pirate or a straw hat pirate. Or I could decide. Or maybe you don't like any of the straw hats. Maybe for some god unknown greed that you hate them. And you're like, screw the straw hat. I'm gonna kill them. You could do that. You could try to kill the straw hat. You could gather a crew and attack the straw hats in combat. And maybe you'd win. Or maybe Zora would cut your ship in half in one slice and you'd lose. You could eat Della fruit. You could eat Della fruit of your choosing. Now, this is where it gets complicated because there's only one of every Della fruit. So what I would assume would be is you would create a Della fruit. You could use Della fruit from characters that have either previously been in the story, or you could use the invisibility fruit, maybe Mr. One's fruit, Crocodile fruit. I'm not really sure. But they would have to come up with a way to make you be able to eat Della fruit. Now, hockey. When people talk about this kind of one pink game, a lot of them say hockey. Screw that. No hockey for anybody. If you want to learn hockey, you got to learn it. I don't think you can choose to be a hockey user. You should have the choice to be like a swordman, fight with your legs, fight with a bow staff like Nami does, fight with a sniper rifle and your gun. You should have that choice. But hockey is not something that is known in the East Blue. Only people that live in the East Blue that have been to the New World know that hockey. So it would only be fair if when you're in the East Blue you get to choose a fighting style. Like, you may not want a Delafruit, so then you can choose hand-to-hand -to -hand combat. Right? And then eventually you can find somebody in the New World to teach you hockey. Or teach it to yourself. There may be a self-teaching option. Like maybe you could, maybe you need to like fight 10 people with hockey and win. And then you could self-teach how to use hockey. That is another amazing, amazing idea. Some of these I'm coming up with as I go. This is just me talking to you guys. No script about what I think would make the perfect One Piece game. Now, this is where things get interesting. Alright? Hockey and things like that, it really comes down to ability, power, and fighting style. How would you pick a fighting style? It would be kind of limited. It would be because you were, you had to, if you were a brawler, you'd be a brawler. If you were a swordman, you'd be a swordman. Like, you wouldn't be able to get creative like Zoro and using three swords. But you could still do a lot of really cool stuff. And there, there's so much you could do with this. Like, I have been talking for that, like, five minutes about what you could do as a pirate. As a Marine, to become a Vice Admiral, you need to know hockey anyway. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in the SBS and in the data books that could help them make this game amazing. So, like, you could, like, work up through the ranks if you're a Marine. Same thing if you're a Revolutionary. Work up through the ranks and do missions. But you're a Marine, you can work up through the ranks, and eventually you would have to learn hockey, because you need to know hockey to become a Vice Admiral. Now, I'm not exactly sure if you learn it by yourself, right? or if there's actual, an actual instructor in the Marine that will teach you how to use hockey. That I'm not sure about, but it's, just, it's so interesting. I mean, one piece is such a vast world, and this would be a lot of fun. Now, one very important thing in this game would be freedom. 
You need to have practically, you need to be the entire One Piece world, but you need to have complete and utter freedom, like Elder Scrolls Online. And you need to be able to be in a new world one day and decide I'm turning around and going back to the East Blue because I want to. Like, you need to be able to do that. Now, there are some problems with these settings. What about your captain bails on you? Then screw your captain. I guarantee you, most fans of One Piece would not ever abandon a crew they started in a game that was One Piece based. They wouldn't do it. Most fans in this series would love this idea. Like, imagine leading your own pirate crew. It's just, there's so much you could do with it. But I did mention earlier, earlier, battle mechanic. So what you would do is you would free roam and go from island to island, and eventually you would run into other players. Now, what other player would do is you would talk to them in voice chat, text chat, whatever. You could interact with them and you could be like, hey, how are you doing? And they could be a dick and they could decide, I'm going to kill you. Because this is the One Piece world. Like, I'm going to kill you and take on your treasure and destroy your crew as soon as I can. Or they could decide, like, one of your players, like, one of your players is very skilled. I'm going to kidnap this player. And make them join my crew. You could probably do that. Like, tie up another player and kidnap them. And then you could go to war with that crew. And fight that crew. Or you could decide not to fight them at all and just leave. And you could abandon your crewmate. You could do it. Another thing you could do. Which could be very interesting. Would be to see... So would be form alliance thing with other characters and crews. So if you were a marine... You could have, like, intermarine alliances. Kind of like how Smoker and Alkiji are friends. Like, they're, like, they're allies. Like, even when Alkiji is in the Marines, he still has Smoker back. He's like, bro, we're allies, we're friends, I've got your back, boy. You all know what I'm saying? Like, it's, just, it's very interesting. And I'm very excited to see if this game can ever be made. The reason I think it's very unlikely they would make a game like this, when you could explore the entire One Piece world, create your own character, to make up your own Delafruit or choose from an existing one, that would be the only thing. People would have the same Delafruit, but you would just have to deal with that. You would, you would just need to. I'm sorry, it's the way it would work. There would be thousands of them. So it would be kind of rare to run into another player with your same Delafruit. That alone would be great. Because there's so many Delafruits. But then again, I also would think we would want to obviously say no using stuff like the Flare Flare Fruit and the Marinomi. Me. Like, I feel like really common Delafruits that everybody would use would have to be actually placed all over the map. I do have to be hidden somewhere randomly where no one, where a player would never find them and no could be like a once every blue moon thing. Like, that would be really, really, really cool. And the way it would work is if a player does eat a double fruit, then they gain the power, but they can no longer swim. That's the point of having a crew. If you're drowning, you're non fruit users can dunk, jump in and save you. It's a very, very interesting concept. And I'm very excited to see if they could ever make a game like this. I'm really sorry. My braces are messed up, so when I talk a lot, sometimes I, they, like, poke out. It, like, pokes me, and I'm sorry. But, um, the reason I feel like this game could be made, alright? The reason I feel like it could be made it's because, for one reason, and one piece, and one reason only. One piece of popularity in Japan is insane. The Japanese would play it. I would, I mean, and there is enough of a fan base in America that they know about things to burning blood. They know we would all play it. And you add all the American fans, and all the Japanese fans, all the European fans, and all the Korean fans. Apparently, One Piece is, like, really big in South Korea. Then you had all the South Korean fans, all the European fans, all the American fans, all the Japanese fans together. You could make money off of it. 
I would pay weekly enough of money to play this game. I would pay $20 a month to play this game. And this game would just be so awesome. But then that, what I've given you, through a lot of fanboying, is what I think would be the perfect One Piece game. Well, you tell me in the comments about your perfect One Piece video game. And also, I do plan on doing a video on Burning Blood maybe one day. I don't know, gaming isn't my thing. But I definitely wanted to do this. And I will be making a similar video about the perfect Naruto game soon. I would also like to tell... Whoa. To tell you to expect more Naruto content. Because I really want to make Naruto content. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like if you enjoyed. Tell me your thoughts in the comments on the perfect One Piece game. Subscribe for more videos. This is One Piece Nation. Signing out. Have a great day, guys.